Good morning. It is Wednesday, February 16th, 2022, and I'm Pastor Mark Dilley of West Valley Grace Fellowship. I pray the message this morning will be used to strengthen you in your faith and encourage you in your walk with our Savior and Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been preaching through the book of Ephesians, but I've been burdened by uh, the desire or the sense of necessity to talk about rightly dividing the word of truth. And so I'm going to do a series of, series of lessons on uh, some of the things that Jesus Christ taught while he was here on earth in the gospel of the kingdom that is at variance with some of the things that the Apostle Paul teaches in the gospel of the grace of God for the church, the body of Christ. And so those who believe that they should obey what Christ taught during his earthly ministry as the king and Messiah of Israel have no choice but to ignore a great amount of what he declared or to disregard a great amount of things that he taught. For those who believe in the distinctive message of the mystery or secret which Christ entrusted to the Apostle Paul, do not depreciate nor diminish what the earthly Christ taught, but we recognize that he was speaking directly to the chosen people of God, the nation or the people, the house of Israel who were under the law. Jesus Christ himself was born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those that were under the law. When Christ initially came to this earth in his first advent, the message of the gospel of the grace of God was hidden. And he was came unto his own. He was born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those that were under the law. He was a minister to the circumcision or the Jewish people. And so seeing the difference between God's purpose for Israel and his purpose for the church, the body of Christ, we are in a better position to avoid much of the confusion and are enabled to properly understand the seemingly irreconcilable or conflicting statements that Christ makes compared to what Paul makes without having, without having to ignore the validity of what was said at the time. Since sin entered the world, the redeemed have always been saved and justified by grace through faith alone. But that faith was in whatever revelation they had been given from God. And that revelation has not always been the same message. It's very clear in Scripture. And we'll talk about that in just a second. This salvation was provided by God through his foreknowledge of the sacrificial death of his sinless son on behalf of all who would believe the message he made known to them. In other words, in the Old Testament, before Jesus Christ died on the cross, God could forgive their sins on the basis of the blood of Christ that was going to be shed in the future. And so he was looking forward to the day that Christ would come and pay the price for those sins. And so in the Old Testament, Abraham was justified or reckoned righteous by God by faith. And it was all by grace. And so in no way are we minimizing the importance of the death of Christ on the cross in any fashion throughout the whole Bible. 
every person that will ever be redeemed will be redeemed through faith in Jesus Christ and on the faithfulness of Christ. And so it's my intention in the next two or next few lessons to draw our attention to the scriptures and identify some common statements that contribute to the confusion and difficulty that arises when we don't rightly divide the word of truth. It may give an appearance of great devotion and commitment to profess or to declare that whatever Christ taught is what I am going to do. But not only is it wrong doctrinally, it is impossible in many cases to do what Christ taught. He lived his entire life under the law to redeem them that were under the law. The Gentiles were never under that Mosaic covenant, the law. And so one of the most common responses that I get is from my messages about right division is that there is only one gospel. And that is just not appropriate today. Excuse me for a second, I have to go get something. I, I happen to leave my revised notes at a different place. But the fact that people, I often say to me, there is only one gospel. Or they might make the statement something like, Peter, John the Baptist, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul, they all preached the same gospel. And I believe that it is important then to understand what do they mean by all the same gospel. For example, the word gospel appears only in the New Testament, as far as the King James translation is concerned. And these are some phrases regarding that gospel. The gospel of God, the gospel of the blessed God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Christ, the gospel of his son, the gospel of peace. The gospel unto Abraham, the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the circumcision, the gospel of the uncircumcision, the gospel of the grace of God, the gospel of your salvation, the gospel, just my gospel, Paul calls it, my gospel. And so, as I mentioned, in the King James Version, the word gospel occurs for the first time in Matthew 23. And that word gospel means, originally it meant a reward for glad tidings. But the idea of the reward passed away and the word gospel became glad tidings or good news or um, another name might be good message. And so there's a lot of good news in the scripture. There's a lot of gospels in the scriptures if we're just talking about what the word gospel means. So when people say there's only one gospel, I don't understand what they mean. And in most of those responses, they just pick little things that are similar and say, see, that's the same gospel. But what are they talking about? Are they talking about the gospel of salvation? There's only one way to be saved. And if that's what they're saying, I can agree with that and I can disagree with that. I don't believe Abraham was saved believing the same gospel or good news that I was saved believing. I am saved today 
because Jesus Christ, the sinless Son of God, died on that cross for my sins. Now, Abraham is saved on the same basis or the same principle. But he didn't know Jesus Christ died for his sins. There was no declaration of that. As we continue to have these messages, we're going to show that when Jesus Christ talked about his death and his resurrection to his own disciples, they never understood what he was talking about. So how could they have gone out and preached the very gospel that saves me today if they didn't even believe it or know it or understand it in any way? And they were afraid to ask him about it. But we're saved today. Today there is only one gospel for sure. And Paul makes that very plain. He says, if any man preach any other gospel, let him be accursed. And so the gospel for today is clearly stated in the scriptures. Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day. I am saved today on the basis or the merits of the blood of Jesus Christ. And I know that. That is the gospel of my salvation today. But if Adam and Eve were redeemed, they didn't know that it was through the cross work of Jesus Christ that they would be redeemed. There's no scriptures in the Old Testament that clearly portray that. Now, there are prophetic statements that now with the full revelation of scripture, we can go back and see the prophecy there and how Christ fulfilled it. But the, uh, the prophets desired to know these things and looked into them and they didn't understand them. It is only through the revelation of the gospel of the grace of God that we are saved today. Nobody is saved today by repenting and being baptized. We are saved by grace through faith, believing that Jesus Christ bore my sins in his body on that cross. And so, Lord willing, in the coming messages, we're going to show a lot of things that Jesus Christ preached and taught that are not appropriate or are not correct for today. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing to illumine our hearts to the truth of your word. Lord, may we be totally dependent upon your spirit, confessing our submission to him, to trust him to teach us the truth of your word. And Lord, we bow before you now in awe and adoration for your amazing grace and the great gift of salvation that is ours through your son, and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who bore our sins in his body on that cross, that by faith in him, we would receive the gift of eternal life. And it's in his name we pray. Amen.